Bismillah. Um, so, I'll, I, I'll, let me just give you a quick review of what we did last time. Um, and then I'm going to take it from there. So, we started discussing random variables, discrete random variables in particular. So, what are random variables? J. Uh, Salman or Salman Yakat. So, what is a random variable? Uh, sir, uh, we discussed that random variable can be called, it is a function that maps the sample space that we have to a real number line where we can apply the probability. Good. And uh, when is, uh, we're talking about discrete random variables, so why the qualified discrete? I mean, what does that imply? It can t take on uh, discrete values on the number line. Uh, discrete values which could be infinite, but they're countably infinite. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so that's a random variable. And then uh, corresponding to a random variable, we have uh, the probability mass function, right? Um, and probability mass function actually characterizes the random variable in terms of what, with what probability that random variable can take on different values on the real number line, okay? And the notation we have for that is P, uh, this thing here, this thing here, P, subscript capital X and then within the bracket small x. So this just means that this is a probability that the random variable capital X takes on a value which is equal to small x. Okay. Um, and then we did some examples. Let me just skip that. Um, and then, of course, this is an important note here that the PMF uh, is always going to be between zero and one. So PMF evaluated anywhere is going to be between zero and one. And moreover, if you sum the PMF on all of the values that the random variable can take, that should turn out to be equal to one, right? Then we started discussing commonly, uh, common random variables, common discrete random variables. First and foremost, we have the Bernoulli random variable, which just corresponds to um, a, a random variable which has potentially two outcomes, right? It's a binary outcome either a zero or a one, or either a true or a false, or either a success or a failure, okay? Whenever you have two possible outcomes, we say that Bernoulli, that random variable uh, is a Bernoulli random variable. And conventionally speaking, uh, the values of that Bernoulli random variable can take are either zero uh, or a one, okay? And it's char characterized by, uh, by the parameter P, which is between zero and one, okay? Uh, we are now going to start talking about the other random variable, uh, another random variable, which is the binomial random variable, and which is perhaps very familiar. So what is the binomial random variable? So Asif, what is a uh, binomial random variable? Sir, in my opinion, there are end trials and then we outcomes to assign the random variable. Okay, end trials. What kind of trials are there? What we had in Bernoulli, there two possible outcomes. Yeah. In that case, there are two random variables. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. And trials the results there. Right. Some, some, some more there. Uh, Mohsen, you want to say something? Uh, yes, sir. So exactly, K successes ki likelihood uh, out of a total of n independent uh, experiments. It's okay. Known as binomial. Okay. So essentially, uh, binomial random variable is like uh, we discussed towards the end of the class, uh, last class as well. Josefa raised this issue uh, that binomial is very closely linked to. Uh, Bernoulli random variable, okay? And the way they're linked is that if you perform a Bernoulli trial independently n number of times, this some given number of times, and then you count the number of times you have a success or for that matter, a failure, right? That number of successes or that number of failures is something called a binomial random variable. Okay, so, so we say okay, you, you consider repeating 
Bernoulli trial n times. And uh, the key here is that they're repeated independently. What do I mean by that? So when I say that they're independent trials, what does that mean? Jim Walls? Probability of success or probability of failure same that the change new the different change. Uh, okay. So um, so independent come as it's actually yeah, yeah, chain yoki. They can uska yeah, ke that does not so any outcome that I get at a particular time, right? When one of the trials does not statistically impact what I'm gonna get in the next trial. Any a trial key outcome does not affect the statistical uh, behavior of the next trial. That's what I mean by independent trials, right? So in other words, if there's an independence of events as well, right? Okay, if I'm, for example, flipping a coin, the first time I flip it, I get some result, right? The second time I, I flip it, I get another result, right? And the second result that I get is statistically independent of the first result that I get because the first one does not statistically impact what I'm going to get in the next one. Okay. So that's what I meant by independent trials, right? The probability, and there's another way to put, as Ma said, is that the probability that you're going to get a heads does not change with, with, as you proceed with, with the trials. Okay. So that's what I mean by independence. Right. Um, so then we say the, the number of, of successes, or for that matter, failure. I mean, typically we say successes um, is a binomial random variable. Okay. Um, so, Ghazi, I want to see where you're sitting. Okay. Okay. Can you can you please explain the background? I mean, I I'm not familiar. I'm not that oh. of a person. <laughs> oh, I'm, sir, I I couldn't. I'm in a different room, so I don't have a normal background. So I just. Then I'm, 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 I'm more interested in what the background represents. Oh, it's from Naruto. It's from the final valley. It's where the main characters have their final showdown. Okay. Okay. Very okay, important. Main, 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 I, I I don't know of this stuff this okay um, so so number number of successes that you get uh, is a binomial random variable and why is it a random variable because of course because each trial is is random the number of successes that you're gonna get is random as well and therefore uh, there's an uncertainty involved right um, what values can the random variable take so let x be that random variable So what's the range of values that the random variable capital X can take? What do you think? Uh, Zen? What yeah. values are values? From zero, yeah. Okay, and infinite, all the way up to infinite. infinite. So it can take first off, it can only take on integer number of val integer values, right? Did you show it? Yes. So it's between zero and one included. Zero and one? Uh, from zero to one included. Uh, the random variable value later. Yeah. But yeah, zero, so zero or one or any other question? No, between zero and one. Be, why, why do you think it's going to be between zero and one? The random variable counts the number of successes that you get in n trials. So, let's say you perform a thousand trials, okay? Thousand times you flip a coin and you count the number of times you get ahead, right? That's a random variable. Yes, sir. I mixed it up. Sorry. So, zero or one, right? It would be Mars. 
सर एन तक होंगे टोटल ट्राई राइट सो एक्स इज एन एलिमेंट ऑफ दिस सेट इट स्टार्ट फ्रॉम जीरो इंटीजर सेट राइट इट्स आइगर अ जीरो और अ वन और अ टू ऑल द वे एफ टू एन Okay, hold on. Okay, so this is zero, one, two, all the way up to, all the way up to n. Right. So these are the values that the random variable can take. Now, what about the probability mass function corresponding to this? So I'd say the probability mass function of the random variable. is specified by this notation which just means this is the probability that the random variable capital x takes on a value an integer small k right i am not going to go over the proof of why this is so but i'm just going to write out the final result because uh, this is hopefully something you're all familiar with right so what is this equal to ji josefa माइक आपका अनम्यूट कर दे प्लीज सॉरी सर दैट्स फाइन इट विल बी बेसिकली इक्वल टू एन सी के टाइम्स पी टू द पावर बेसिकली पी व्हिच इज द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ सक्सेस ऑल राइट एंड दिस विल बी के एंड 1 माइनस पी टू द पावर एन माइनस के गुड राइट वेयर पी ऑफ इज ऑफ कोर्स द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ सक्सेस Right, and if I was just counting the the number of failures, so it, I mean this would have been the other way around. I mean one minus p raised to the power n, uh, raised to the power k, and p raised to the power n minus k, right? And that's why I said you could either count the failures or you can count the successes. Okay, and this of course holds uh, for uh, values of k which are from zero, one, all the way up to n, and for values of k which do not belong to this interval or is this set. the pmf is not defined or you could rather say the pmf is zero at all of the places theek hai is it takes on this functional form here and outside of this interval outside of this interval the pmf is going to be zero theek hai acha just very very quickly very briefly how do you come about this i mean where does the proof come come from i mean you can derive this by the way you can't see that anybody so bernoulli random variables bernoulli se kaise aata hai aur usme bhi do hi hum cheezon ko dekhte hote hain success aur failure ko yeah but then where this, this where this n choose k come from kyunki hum n trials dekh rahe hain isme yeah aur ek ek trial ko hum further dekhe ja rahe hain till n okay So that's n choose, n choose k. Where does that come from? So apologies for that. Um, so once again, uh, you you if you want, if you're counting k successive out of n, the number of ways you can have k successive out of n out of n is n choose k. And then why is this p raised to power k? Ye ye kyun hai? So this is the likelihood of exactly pay, uh, k successful uh, events, and the one, one minus p would be yeah one of those, right? There are total a total of n choose k such sequences in which there are k successes out of n, okay? And for each one of those n choose k sequences, the probability of each one of those ha those happening is p raised to the power k times one minus p raised to the power n minus k, okay? And the total probability is just यूनियन है उसका सबका तो यू यू जस्ट सम ओवर ऑल पॉसिबल सीक्वेंसेस एंड देयर टोटल ऑफ एन चूज के दैट्स व्हाई इट्स अ मल्टीप्लिकेशन राइट सो आई आई डोंट वांट टू गो इनटू अ लॉट ऑफ डिटेल्स हियर बट दैट्स रफली स्पीकिंग हाउ यू हाउ यू कम अप विद दिस राइट नाउ कैन समबडी वेरीफाई फॉर मी वेदर सो वेदर दिस सम्स टू वन so verify that this if i sum from k equal 0 to n um n choose k p raised to power k 
times one minus P raised to power N minus K. What does this turn out to be equal to? This should sum to one by the way, right? Because this is a PMF, this is a valid PMF. Does this sum to one? And how does this sum to one? So just a sanity check. So how does this sum to one? Uh, sir, if you actually open this up, this turns into, I think this is equivalent to the binomial coefficient theorem that we had. And in the end, you just add P yeah. plus one minus P and that equals to one. Right. So this is, and that's why this is called the binomial random variable, because this is just a binomial expansion. Binomial expansion of what? This is equal to P plus one minus P whole raised to power n, which is just equal to one, right? If you recall binomial expansion, kya hoti hai? binomial expansion hoti hai? a plus b raised to power n is summation k equals zero to n, uh, n choose k, k raised to power k and b raised to power n minus k, right? So this is just a binomial expansion, right? A plus B whole squared is A squared plus B squared plus two AB because of this, by the way. Right, or, or A, this is just one form, or simple form of uh, this one will expand. Okay, G motion. So what you've written was not visible on my screen. I don't know if the others were able to see it. Uh, see, can I, am I still? Okay, so I am still facing Internet issues there. Okay. Mohsen, can you see that? All right. Yes, sir. All right, so now let's uh, oops. Uh, this is the third one actually, which is the last one that we're going to talk about is a Poisson kind of variable. So by the way, um, binomial random variable K, there are many, many other examples. I mean, the, 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 the most common one that you would have come across uh, would be flipping of coins, right? So you flip a coin 100 times and somebody asks you, so what is the probability that 10 out of these 100 uh, flips result in a head, right? That's given by the binomial theorem, right? Uh, there are many, many other exam engineering examples that you come across, for example, if you're sending packets over some network, right? Each packet is going to experience a failure probability of P, right? Where this P is typically small, right? So you have a packet and independently one after the other, when you're sending it, each, each packet is gonna experience a probability of failure, which is equal to P. And then somebody says, if I've sent 100,000 packets, what is the probability that Hundred of those hundred thousand turn out to be uh, incorrectly received. Okay, so that's one application. There's another application which is maybe more relevant to a course, which is okay, let's say I give you a final exam, uh, and there are multiple choice questions there, where each question has four choices, one of them which is correct, okay? Or lo and behold, somebody comes in, not one of you, but somebody else, uh, who has not prepared anything or was bilko tukke marna shoot at tak 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 tak. Right, thus questions are total, and the probability with which he's gonna get one of the questions right, any one of the questions right is one by four, of course, because there's just one answer, one correct answer, right? And then somebody asks you, what is the probability 
that he is going to get five out of the 10 questions correct, right? That will simply be equal to 10 choose five times 0.25 raised to the power five times 0.75 raised to the power five again, okay? So that's another example of, uh, of how uh, binomial random variables are, are applicable, okay? So next uh, is a Poisson random variable. So Poisson random variable kya hota jab? Sir, I think it can take any non-negative integer value from zero to infinity. Okay, it can take any non-negative value from integer from zero to infinity. That's correct. D Shoaib. So in the binomial random variable, if you let n approach infinity and yeah. p approach zero, yeah. if you multiply that and take the limit, yeah. uh, it would reduce to a scalar, and then you can it will so you can use that scalar to uh, write the probability of the binomial random variable. Okay, आपने ये कहाँ पे पढ़ा? Where did you read this? Sir, uh, probability course में and I think कोई probability book में भी so probability के कौन से कौन सा कोर्स सर वो ये जो 200 200 राइट ओके सो व्हाट यू सेज इज इज 100 परसेंट करेक्ट बट व्हाट आई एम गोइंग टू डू इज के आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू द पीएमएफ ऑफ द पॉइसन रैंडम वेरिएबल फर्स्ट एंड देन टॉक अबाउट दिस रिलेशनशिप विद बाइनोमियल राइट सो पॉइसन रैंडम वेरिएबल इज अ रैंडम वेरिएबल इन इट्स ओन राइट ओके अजयफा यू हैव अ क्वेश्चन um, sir, I just wanted to build upon that that Poisson random variable is related to the time between successive events. So, yes, or I, it is defined by the number of events in a certain time interval, basically. Uh, no, no, no. So, what you're you are confused, can I say Poisson process? Oh, okay. Right? So, that is related to this. Uh, if you're uh, so let, let, let me come back to this, okay? Well, let me just define the PMF first and then and I'll just your, your question. Uh, Shoaib, do you still have a um, question? Yeah, Pele Kahat Karayi. All right, thank you. All right, so the PMF is given by this expression. So this is alpha raised to power k divided by k factorial e raised to power minus alpha. Okay. And the values that it holds true is for, as Zan suggested, for all non-negative integer values, all the way from zero to infinity. Okay. And it turns out that this Poisson PMF is indeed a limiting case of a binomial random variable. Uh, in the sense K, and we're not going to talk too much about this in the sense that when in a binomial experiment, as the number of trials n goes to infinity and the success probability p goes to zero in such a way that this product n p approaches alpha, that binomial in that limit uh, turns out to be Poisson. So that's the relationship uh, between uh, Poisson and binomial. So, so so if we take the, um, so Poisson is a limiting case of a binomial and a variable um, in which n goes to infinity, uh, p goes to zero, in a particular fashion, such that n p equals alpha, such that limit n going to infinity n p equals alpha. Oops, is alpha. That's when that's the 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 relationship between binomial and um, Poisson random variables. Okay. Okay. Uh, what are the examples for this? Uh, some of them, so Josefa, for example, said, okay, so 
एग्जाम्पल्स इंक्लूड सबसे जो कॉमन एग्जाम्पल है वो अराइवल्स की है सो एक्चुअली नंबर ऑफ अराइवल्स so this when i say arrivals this engineering application could be the number of packets that arrive at a router in a certain time duration right that is can be well modeled to be a poisson random variable right or for that matter uh, very very commonly hum kya karte hain ki jo arrival times hote arrivals hote hain for your motorway tollway plaza right and you want to model statistically model the number of arrivals of number of cars coming in and being serviced by a toll plaza right that can be well modeled as a poisson random variable right or the number of customers coming in to the checkout counter at a grocery store right that can be well modeled as a as a poisson random variable so there's no talk about processes yet theek okay? hai process to ke jab hum jayenge to there is a relationship with the poisson process that's going to be for later right for now the number of arrivals that you that you get at a in for example a grocery store the customer number arrivals in a grocery store for a certain time duration that can be well modeled statistically as a poisson random variable theek hai zafar uh question yahan pe koi hai because you no, brought sir. it up right okay if if that's clear yeah uh, yahan pe let me take some questions here if there are any uh before i move on to the next topic so these are the only three discrete random variables i'm going to talk about uh okay baki book mein aapke kuch aur available hain kuch descriptions hain you can take a look uh, on your own ji shoaib you have a question Yes, sir. Uh, in the in the probability course, with the rule of thumb that we studied was that when n p is less than seven, then yeah. you then you can apply the Poisson approximation to binary distribution. So I wanted to ask it: Where does that n p less than seven come from? Uh, I am not, not sure. Uh, Shoaib, I don't know. It's just rule of thumb. Um, I mean, so. देखिए डेली डिपेंड्स ऑन हाउ एक्यूरेट ऑफ एन एस्टिमेट ऑफ एन अप्रोक्सीमेशन डू यू वांट वेरी वेरी एक्यूरेट सो इफ यू वेरी वेरी एक्यूरेट तो 7 इज नॉट गुड इनफ ओके ओके लेकिन देयर आर सम प्रैक्टिकल प्रॉब्लम्स एसोसिएटेड विद बाइनोमियल रैंडम एंड दैट्स व्हाई वी वी टिपिकली रिलाय ऑन पॉइसन अप्रोक्सीमेशन ओके सर ओके कैन कैन यू Can you think of what the practical problem may be? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I think the one you just said the earlier of uh, people uh, arrival. Time. So uh, I'm expecting someone, and uh, will he come by that time or uh, not? So I'm expecting a few people to come in, and how many of those will come by that time or not? I mean, what 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 I meant was that binomial is something else. This is why I say binomial co Poisson approximate. किया जाता है काफी बाइनोमियल के साथ तो सर सॉरी डिविएट हो रहा है लेकिन मसला तो ये ना कि मतलब कोफिशिएंट्स उसके कैलकुलेट करना काफी मुश्किल हो जाता है यस दैट्स अ प्रॉब्लम दैट्स अ प्रैक्टिकल प्रॉब्लम राइट सो अब यू कैन गो अहेड एंड ट्राई दिस इन मैटलैब बाय द वे राइट के दिस टर्म दिस इज n चूज k इज गोइंग टू बी वेरी वेरी हार्ड टू कंप्यूट एज n गोस ऑन इंक्रीजिंग एंड बिकॉज़ देयर आर फैक्टोरियल्स इन्वॉल्वड हियर right so if there are factorials involved then computing the factorial uh, may turn out to be beyond your numerical capability of a computer if n is large enough and and that's why we 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 like the poisson approximation because that's analytically tractable okay okay acha there was this uh, question which an important question sorry for me to miss out okay what is alpha here so alpha we, we we're going to talk about this in in more detail in the next uh, chapter or maybe the one after that but alpha generally speaking roughly speaking 
So roughly speaking, is the average average value of x. We get some generally speaking, some parameter. Right, there's some parameter, and what that parameter represents is some average value. So, for instance, if this Poisson random variable corresponds to the number of arrivals of customers at a checkout counter, if alpha is large, what that means is on average, I would expect a lot more customers to come in as compared to if alpha was small. So, roughly speaking, I would say okay, on average, I would expect a lot smaller number of customers. Uh, to arrive at the checkout counter. Okay, so Sundays go around the first, right? This alpha in alpha theta is going to be very, very large, right? And towards the end of the month, and which is true, so so true, towards the end of the month, um, on a weekday, this alpha is going to be quite small, right? And 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 that's why I prefer. I prefer end of the month grocery shopping uh, on a weekday, early in the morning. Right? So that's based on statistical expectations. Okay. Any other questions? So this is uh, customers. At uh, checkout counter or packets in the router, and and many many other. And one example we're going to see next. This is an engineering app. Okay. Any questions? Okay, so what we're gonna do next, and this is one of the things I like about the textbook, is that at the end of each chapter, so this is wrapping up the chapter, uh, chapter number two of the textbook. At the end of each chapter, uh, the textbook has uh, an engineering application, which, which basically consolidates all of the material that we've covered into a practical setting, into a practical application, and, and illustrates how what we've learned is important in the real world. Okay, so this particular engineering application has to do, as you can see on your screen, is optical communication. Okay, so how does optical communication work? One of the ways we could have this work is um, is through the following. Okay, so you have data. Which is of the form of bits, zeros or ones. Okay, now these zeros and ones need to be communicated from one point to the next, right? And, and from one point to the other. Uh, and in optics, uh, you have lasers for this communication, right? So this data goes into a laser. Which laser is incident upon uh, fiber So this is uh, fiber So this is there's light incident upon this fiber uh, from the point of transmission and then at the point of reception the light comes out and this is fed into something called a photo detector. Right, and the output of this photo detector is fed into some decision block. Which outputs data estimates.
Okay, so this is what the what what uh, typical uh, optical communication setup looks like, right? So you have you have laser uh, inserted upon a, uh, an optical fiber, right? And on the other hand, you have photo detectors. Okay, now how does communication work? Any ideas? Who is not going to communicate? Prane zamane mein, right? You how how would you communicate with with visible light with somebody? See, this is communication. This is one. This is zero. This is one. This is zero. This is one. This is zero. Right? You switch between two levels. So when you're transmitting data, so a flashlight, you turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, um, and that represents binary data. The longer you turn it on, that represents some one 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 one, right? Or you turn keep it turning off, that represents zero zero, and that's how actually Morse code works as well, right? Uh, more species are not doing on off on off with it, right? With data, we use something called on off keying, right? And what that means is, if you want to transmit a one, you would turn on the laser, and if you want to transmit a zero, you want to turn off the laser. Okay, and that's the simplest communication strategy that you can think of. Okay, so uh, we, we use something called on off keying. So, which means that for transmitting one, you basically turn the laser on, and for transmitting zero, you turn it off. Okay. Now, what does the photo detector do? The photo detector basically. Oh, sorry. So the photo detector, essentially, you can say you can count the number of electrons generated due to the incident light okay so the photo detector all it does is it's a so sort of a measurement thing or a detector thing when light is incident upon it uh, it basically counts the number of electrons that come out uh, because of that incident in a particular time duration right so in a, in a, uh, for a given time duration right and interestingly and because we're uh, this is an application of random variables um the number of electrons that are spit out or that are detected by this photo detector is not certain I mean, there's no certainty involved here. In other words, you cannot say, "Kya, agar me, if I turn on the light, the number of electrons that I'm going to count is going to be equal to this." I right? and and there's not there's no certainty that if I turn off the laser, the number of electrons that I count is going to be equal to this. That's not true. The number of electrons that you count, either when the light is incident or when it is not incident, that's going to be a random variable, right? And the, the the reason why it's random variable is because of uncertainty, is because there's background noise and and uh, dark currents and and so on, some physics involved. I mean, which I'm not very familiar with, right? Uh, this is so that's why the number of electrons that you get is a statistical quantity. It it is a random variable, right? Now we need to have a model for that, right? We need to have a model for how you can characterize the number of electrons. That this photo detector detects or, or photo detector counts, right? Uh, sir, shouldn't uh, sir, shouldn't you have two random variables for uh, the photo detector? One random variable for when you are actually uh, transmitting a one, and one random variable for when you are transmitting a zero. It depends depends on how you view it. I can view both of them as falling under the same broad random variable with a conditioning operator. 
Okay. Yes, you. Uh, I mean, you would need to condition it on something, right? Yes. Okay. So either I can take that with probability. Uh, so when I'm trying trying to transmit a one, I have a random variable. Oh, uh, Asan, that that's detect. not that's not completely necessary. Uh, but that that is indeed a good model. Like, as we will see, I will be able to give you a random variable x, which is not dependent on whether this is turned on or turned off. A random variable. Like this. Okay. okay we could condition that one, na? Right? Conditioning okay. Okay. Conditioning okay. 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 Follows a Poisson distribution can be well modeled by a Poisson random variable, right? However, as Arsalan pointed out, that the Poisson random variable when the laser is turned on is going to be different than the Poisson random variable when the laser is turned off. In both of these cases, it will indeed be a Poisson random variable. It's just that the Poisson random variables are going to be different, and in particular, their intensities are going to be different. In other words, their averages are going to be different. Okay, as we're going to see in just a bit. Do you, Mohsen, you have a question? No, sir. Okay. So, so we say, okay, let the uh, number of electrons detected, which is a random variable, be denoted. By capital X, so I'm using capital X, so it's a random variable. Okay. Ji Salam, you have a question. Uh, Ji said, just wanted to confirm that we've chosen Poisson because uh, n is large. How do we make that decision? So not necessarily. Actually, um, there's physics involved there. Uh, so this is quantum mechanical arguments. Uh, that you can use uh, to come up with a model. Okay. Now, uh, I could argue, and this is off the top of my head. I mean, don't quote me anywhere, even though this is being recorded and it's going to be up on the web. Uh, like, and there's a disclaimer here that the following is what I think is going to be true, which is okay, as the photons are incident, okay, the photon may result in an electron. Being generated or being going out of the photodetector or not. Okay, with a certain probability, the electron is going to go out, and with a certain probability, is not going to go out. Okay, and the probability with which it's going to go out is some some parameter p. Okay, or sare ke sare electrons ek dusre se independent hain, and I have so many photons incident. Okay, jiski wajah se I have actually binomial. A binomial trial and counting the number of electrons that go out. Okay, so because the number of electrons is so high, is so large, right, and p is small, right, so therefore I can well approximate it by a Poisson random variable. That's just my guess. Okay, there's another application I was uh, working on. Usme is tarah ki cheez hoti hai. Right, sir. Right, sir. I understand. Ji, ji, Gazi, go ahead. Sir, I was just saying that. सर यही है और हम ना इस आर्गुमेंट को ना फोटोन और सेल्फ के ऊपर भी हम कर सकते हैं फोटोन्स को जब मॉडल किया जाता है ना क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स के अंदर जब मैक्सवेल की इक्वेशंस को क्वांटाइज किया जाता है तब ना हम उसको ना एस अ पॉइजन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन रिप्रेजेंट करते हैं कि जो आपका पॉइजन photo diode ke upar shine karo aur electric aur current ko measure karo to aapke paas na ek poison distribution aati hai aur uske andar ek short mein so so we have the resident uh, physicist amongst us uh, thank you gazi uh, and maybe if you can point uh, the class to some resources uh, some basic resources that they can look up if you want so uh -huh. i i have some good i have a pdf with so mujhe mujhe bhi agar aap bhej dijiyega please I'll upload it on the forum part. Okay, nice. 
अच्छा जी अब सो दिस पॉइसन मॉडल फॉर दिस Uh, however, the Poisson model is going to be different when a one is transmitted and is going to be di- different for when a zero is transmitted. And why do you think that is so? By the way, um, Salam. Uh, so I didn't follow your question. So my my point is that when a one when the laser is turned down, I would expect the the number of electrons counted to follow a Poisson random variable Poisson distribution with the Which is different from the case when the laser is turned off, right? right. So yes, turned on and turned off a Poisson. Hai. That's something I know for sure, right? But the mm-hmm. two cases are different. Why are they different? In the second case, we, in this case, you're not getting much uh, uh-huh. of the of, of successes in the in the case when it's turned off. Okay, good. So inherently, that is the different. Uh, Excellent. So I would expect statistics. I would expect the average number of electrons that I count to be different in both cases. Because Absolutely. Laser, laser turned on yet? Laser. laser turned on yet? So I would expect the number of electrons on average to go up. And when it's turned off, I would expect the number of electrons on average to go down. Exactly. Exactly. Just. You have said earlier that we cannot count exactly how many number of electrons are coming, photons are coming. But we can make an approximation that when it's on, it will be more. Yeah, on average. Exactly on average. On average, but remember, we can do an experiment and count. It's just that case that count is going to be different from one experiment to the other, and that's why. Right. Otherwise, we can do an experiment. Okay. This has no outcome. I got to know. Okay. So, so that's why we have this model. And say that the probability of x given zero is a definition. um that i'm going to use that this is the probability that the number of electrons that i count is equal to k given a zero percent in other words given the laser was turned off and at the same time um probability of x given one is another distribution which is just defined as the probability That x equals k, given one cent. Okay. And this is the model we're going to follow. So this is going to be r naught raised to power k, e raised to power minus r naught divided by uh, k factorial. And this is going to be equal to r one raised to power k, e raised to power minus r one divided by k factorial. ठीक है? Ah, where these r's are basically r not k is the average electrons. When zero cent, and similarly R one is the average electrons when one cent, right? And what do you expect? I mean, what is going to be the relationship between R one and R naught? I mean, which 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 one of them is going to be greater? R one. R one. Okay, so that's because that's when it's turned on, right? So R one is greater than R naught. Okay. All right. Acha. Um, now that we have the model, following is a problem we face, right? And that problem is that you have to know that on the receiver side, you don't know that one transmitter was there, zero transmitter was there, right? If you knew that, then the communication was not there, right? And that's why that's what we're trying to do in the first place, right? And at the receiver side, we need to guess whether a one was being transmitted or a zero was being transmitted, right? लेकिन रिसीवर साइड पे मेरी मेजरमेंट क्या है एट द रिसीवर साइड माय मेजरमेंट इज एक्स राइट सो लेट्स से आई मेजर द नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स फॉर अ सर्टेन टाइम ड्यूरेशन एंड इट टर्न्स आउट दैट दैट कैपिटल एक्स आई सो दैट मींस आई डन एन एक्सपेरिमेंट दैट कैपिटल एक्स टर्न्स आउट टू बी इक्वल टू सम नंबर के 
ठीक है कोई नंबर आया वन मिलियन आया टू मिलियन आया थ्री आया फोर आया वट एवर दैट नंबर इज राइट एंड फॉर दैट नंबर आई नीड टू डिसाइड वट एवर दैट नंबर इज I need to decide whether a zero was transmitted or a one was transmitted. Okay. Now, if you had no knowledge whatsoever about probability, right? But you have some intuition, right? What would your intuition tell you? Say, I make cup one per decide to, cup zero per decide to. I mean, let's talk about this intuitively first before formalizing this as mathematical. My intuition, what can you tell me? Intuition tells us that when I'm getting more detected, uh, yeah. so that means that most likely one transmit who are there. Excellent, right? So that's what intuition tells me. If if the number of electrons that I receive are high, that means it's more probable that I would have this uh, that a one was being transmitted, right? So in other words, I would actually come up with some threshold, right? And I'm going to say that here, this threshold is. इस थ्रेशोल्ड से नीचे अगर होंगे ना नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स तो आई माय बेस्ट गेस वुड बी अ जीरो अदरवाइज इट वुड बी अ वन ठीक है दैट्स व्हाट माय इंट्यूशन टेल्स मी बट हाउ डू यू चूज अ थ्रेशोल्ड राइट दैट्स वन ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम्स राइट एंड एंड हाउ सर्टेन वुड यू बी व्हेन यू मेक अ डिसीजन बेस्ड ऑन व्हाटएवर दैट थ्रेशोल्ड वाज ठीक है अगाजी यू हैव अ क्वेश्चन नो सर इज माय हैंड रेज Yeah, Mehran, you wanted to answer that question, intuition. Uh huh. I was saying threshold too. Okay. Okay. Hi. Right. Somebody else uh, spoke up. Uh, uh sir, well, I was going to contribute to the threshold part. Yeah. Maybe if, so. We have these two different probabilities, yeah. and uh, we know K the probability of uh, K being very high when a zero was sent is very low. So we can. Set a threshold where we choose a certain value of k for which this probability is very small. I think that would be our threshold. How small? Uh, very close to zero. For which, so we could actually solve them together and find k the second probability of uh, uh, one being sent and uh, x equaling uh, to solving both of them for a value of k for which the second probability of a one being sent is very high. And the first probability of a zero being sent is very small. Maybe that would be a threshold. Okay, so it turns out that the, what you're saying may not always be satisfied. So, so let's try to formulate this and see what we can do in probabilistically speaking. Okay. okay. So, probabilistically speaking, and what I'm going to say uh, in the following also, what should make sense, which is, if I have received a certain number of electrons, I've counted a certain number of electrons, right? Let me try to compute the probability that this corresponded to a zero being sent, and let me also compute the probability that this corresponded to a one being sent. Okay, and then see which one is higher. It's like placing that bets that we had discussed in last time. If I have bet placed, can we? So I would see which is more probable. Let me just find out the probabilities for both cases, right? And see that which one was more probable, which was more was more likely. Okay, the more likely scenario should be my optimum decision. Okay, so in other words, what I'm trying to say is, so let's compute given that we observe the outcome. X equals k. What will be a good decision rule? And that would say, "Kiji, let's compute that the probability of a one." Sent given that you've observed that x equals k. Okay, let me compute this probability. Let me also compute the probability that a zero was sent given x equals k. You see, x equals k is something I've observed already. I've done an experiment. I've, I, I have a certain outcome. I have 
end result of that experiment. And I just want to see that given this outcome, let me compute the probability that this corresponded to a zero, and let me compute the probability that this corresponded to a one. Okay? And then I just compare the two. So if, if this is greater, right? If the probability of one being sent is greater than the probability of zero being sent, it makes sense for me to decide here, one was more likely, so my decision is gonna be one. Okay, so here I'm going to decide one cent. Okay, but what about the case when this is the other way around? Right, so zero cent was actually greater than one cent. And then in that case, my decision should have been the side of zero percent. So Hazefa, uh, you, you, I saw you coming into the screen. Um, so we decide, I decide. See what That's what I thought. Right, so that means. <laughs> so this is decide. Okay, so that's a decision rule. And it turns out this is not just a good decision rule. This is actually the best decision rule you can come up with. Right, this is the optimum decision rule in terms of minimizing the probability of error. And we're not going to talk about why there's a proof for that. Okay, you, you can prove it, but we're not going to do that. Okay, but this does make sense, right? This does make intuition, uh, intuitive sense, right? And what we're going to do next is just try to elaborate on these on this test and see if the makes threshold by Vega matrix. Okay, so let's elaborate on this. All right. So, what would be a decision rule? So, decide that uh, one was sent when probability of one sent given x equals k is actually greater than 0.5 by the way okay again which actually corresponds to the same thing that i'm writing here okay so the question then is can you evaluate this probability Have we studied something which will allow us to evaluate this problem? Yes, Mohsin? So Bayes theorem is so, uh, Exactly. So that's where Bayes theory comes in. Bayes theorem comes in. Okay, so Bayes, by the way, is the essence or the foundation block of decision theory, decision making theory. Okay, uh, estimation and detection theory, all of that un builds on top of Bayes theory. Okay, so if I apply the base theorem here, this is the probability that x equals k. Achha, why do I need to apply the base theorem, by the way? Because this probabilistic form is not something available to me directly from the information that's provided above, from the models that I'm provided above. Okay, models may have pass kya available hai? Model may have pass ye available hai. Right, which is x equals k given zero cent. But what we need to evaluate is the other way around, right? And that's why we're gonna use Bayes theorem here. So this is probability x equals k given one cent multiplied by probability one cent divided by probability x equals k, right? And let me uh, first of all, try to evaluate this thing here first. So what is probability of x equals k? Can I evaluate this from the information that's given to me? Jim Wals, uh, you have a question? Yeah, <laughs> comment. No, no, sir, I have to tell you. Total law, total law of probability. Excellent. Right. So you can use total law of probability to evaluate this, and the total law just says, this is equal to probability x equals k 
given one cent times probability one cent plus probability that x equals k given zero cent times probability oops, zero cent. Right? And all of this information is given to us. Except perhaps you would say, Kiti, what is probability 1 cent or probability 0 cent? What do you want to say here? Isha? Probability 1 cent. Um, sir, shouldn't they be provided in the question? So even if it's not provided in the question, what would be your best guess? Data is what is Maybe you do an experiment next time. Right? You pick up any any file on your PC, take it, usko binary me read karne, MATLAB se, ya C se, ya Python se, or so we count the number of zeros and you count the number of ones. Take it, they are going to turn out to be more or less the same. Right? So, not, typically data is always equally likely. Ji, Gazi, you have a question? I was saying, equally likely to have maximum information in code also. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to ignore that comment. Uh, people don't know what the information is. Like, and I'm glad you brought it up. I, we can have this discussion after. Okay. So uh, data is in practical situations equally likely. Zeros are as likely as one. Okay. Zeros are as likely as one. Therefore, a good assumption here is that this is half. And this is, of course, half as well, guys. Right? Now, based on this assumption, if you will, this turns out to be equal to half. Kya hoga? E raised to power um, R1 raised to power K, E raised to power minus R1 divided by K factorial plus half r not raised to power k e raised to power minus r not divided by k factorial right so this is probability x equals k and arsalan this is what i meant at the beginning yeah, i can yes. define this without a conditioning mm -hmm. okay so this is not poisson yes it's not Exactly Poisson. This is not Poisson. Right? So if we, if I just tell you okay, what distribution what distribution does the number of electrons follow at the photo detector when zeros are as likely as ones, so that distribution is not Poisson. This is actually a weighted Poisson. I'll give you show. Genization. Sir, agar, uh, zero one ki probability same hai, toh ye hum, uh, your decision rule of probability of x given zero or probability of x given one se bhi to find out kar sakte the aap uh, kaise uh, so the probability of one being sent or probability of zero being sent equal hai yeah to your decision rule uh, bayesian se uh, bayes theorem se aane ki wajah jo upar probability of x given zero or probability of yeah. x given one se bhi to find ki ja sakti directly two two and we're going to see about this just now Okay, that's an excellent point. So you're one step ahead. Right. So the same rule kya Right? So the same rule here, ke I say ke yaar, um, probability x equals so one cent given x equals k divided by probability x equals k when is this is greater than probability zero cent given x equals k divided by probability of x equals k so when this is true then decide a one right now for this condition to be true i I, let me try to evaluate a, uh, a condition on the number of photons that I receive. So let me expand this condition a bit. 
so this is probability x equals k given one cent times probability of one cent divided by probability of x equals k this needs to be greater than for me to decide one the left hand side needs to be greater than this right hand side okay now there's there's some things that simplify very very easily um which i think nazish pointed out sabse pehli baat hai ki because this is half so this and this cancel they both the same zero cent is exactly the same as one cent so both of them cancel from the, from the inequality theek hai aur jo denominator hai this is also the same on both sides right so i can cancel this as well so you could say ki yaar phir main upar wali cheez determine karne ka fayda hi kya tha right um itni expression likhne ka fayda kya tha ye expression baad mein kaam aayegi when we are evaluating the probability of error okay so the condition that you have is just the following that this is probability x equals k given one cent so for me to decide that a one was transmitted all i need to do is i need to determine whether this condition is satisfied or not and if this condition is satisfied i'm going to decide a one was satisfied if it's not satisfied i'm going to decide a zero was satisfied theek okay? hai um, so let me expand this a little bit so this is r1 raised to power k uh e raised to power minus r1 divided by k factorial greater than r0 raised to power k e raised to power minus r0 divided by k factorial and then this k factorial is cancel as well theek hai aur theory kya banta hai so this is r1 divided by r0 raised to power k greater than e raised to power minus r0 minus r1 right uh do you sefa go ahead um so the line right after you written when Yeah. So why do we have probability x equals to k in the denominator at that point? Because we haven't really opened it up in using base. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yes, you're right. So it's not there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I can just. so this is log this is k log which is this is the natural log this is greater than minus r not minus r1 right so this implies k is greater than and let me switch over the signs so I'm not switch over the sign so is r1 minus r0 divided by log r1 so you see i mean the thing that i get is a very very nice aakhir mein kya karna hai maine aakhir mein based on all of this abstract analysis that we have done all of this probabilistic modeling at the end of the day i just get what your intuition told you right 
Okay, you're going to decide that a one was transmitted when the number of electrons that you measure is greater than a certain threshold. Okay? However, the benefit of, of, of all of this abstract analysis is that that gives you the exact threshold that you should follow. Right? If you knew, for example, R1, you knew R0, right? and that's something we know by both two estimation. Right? So then I can come up with what the threshold should be for me to make an optimum decision. So whenever the number of electrons that I measure is greater than this threshold, I will say one more transmitted. And whenever the number of electrons is going to be less than this threshold, I'm going to decide a zero was transmitted. Okay? So another way to put this is okay, this is a one and this is a zero. Right? So Fida, I mean, the one the, the point I want to impress upon you once again is that all of this probabilistic modeling and all of these evaluations, the calculations, the abstract analysis that were done before this line, right? It has, has many, many practical applications, right? So theory and practice are not two different things, right? They're one and the same. And as if I can remember a quote correctly, I don't know this guy, okay, there, there's nothing as practical as good theory. Right? And this is a case in point. Okay, so we're going to stop here. Um, I can take questions if you have any. Uh, and we're going to take things like yes, engineering applications, maybe we're going to do it next time. Uh, but if you have questions from this, just let me know. Okay.